Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Now today we are going to cover the rest of the solid principles which were left in the previous part. So let's get started. Now the third part, what is Liskov substitution principle? Now this is very difficult part, but it will be easy if you go ahead with me. Okay? I'll try to make it as easy as possible, but I'm seriously telling it's a bit complex one. It's the complex one out of all the five. Now, Liskov substitution principle says that the software should not alter the desirable result when replaced with the parent type with any of the subtypes. That is, derived type must be completely substitutable with the base type. So, what does this mean? Substitutable with the base type. It says that if in case you are giving an object of parent, now if you are using a proper way of implementing inheritance and you are using proper is a relationship, then your derived class must be completely able to substitute your base class. Very difficult to understand. Now, I understand with an example. Now, suppose in this, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll have one more method. Void use me to print yours print your data simple now this method is taking an employee e and with employee e it is calling print me simple something which we have done already and now what we are going to do is i'm going to create an object of client itself because it's a static method i cannot call non-static method so right now i'm creating a new object of it and with this object what i'm going to do is call myself client dot use me to print your data now what i'm going to do is i'm going to send my employee object okay now if this method is capable to take an employee instance so this employee instance is nothing but an instance of employee itself so if i try to run it it will be happy and it will print me one comma code as a answer now this principle says that the derived type what is my derived type trained employee must be completely substitutable for their base type so it should completely happily substitute my base type and still my functionality should not break. So does it break? Let me run it. It's still the same. It's the same result that we have got from the previous one. So it makes sure that you are implementing is a relationship in a proper way. So it this makes sure. So with this code, I have made sure that my employee trained employee is also an employee so this is what liskov principle says it's easy it's just difficult in terms of words it says that derived types must be substitutable for their base type it means that the the classes that you develop by extending our class should be able to fit an application without failure okay again difficult okay it says that if you are extending a class so yes i am extending a trained class it should be completely fit in the application without failure so yes it is fitting in my method without any failure and still the response is, remains the same now this requires the objects of subclass to behave in same way as the object of superclass so does my trained employee behave same as employee yes they do this is mostly seen in places we do run type identification and classes just to appropriate reference type have you heard about the biggest festival for programmers? Yes. Geek so Geek is back with organizing Geek Week, a 7 days event from 19 to 25th of October 2021 to celebrate coders like us. This week we will see daily contests, competitions and engagement activities like Geek Arena, a bunch of 6 activities like What is your coding personality quiz, Merge it up, Idea Summit, Wheel of Fate, Time vs Mentor, what if. Another competition like Learner's Corner, all-in-one platform for tech enthusiasts like us who always prefer learning over everything. The events are Guess and Win, Happy Hours, Course of Day. Job Fiesta, the, basically the Geek Week will not be complete without any job opportunity. So there are numerous vacancies for you to fill in up. Then we have the Super Savers for Super Learners, a combination of course with an incredible price. You can choose and prepare and it will be shipped to you with a discounted price like interview preparation pack. Gate 2022 pack, 
life course pack kit coding packs and many more the fifth one are you the chosen one now you give an answer to a particular course like why do you want this course why do you want data structures or algorithm or full stack course choose your course describe your reason on linkedin and the most valid reason will get the course last but not the least error 404 code not found it is all for all the competitive programmers out there get ready and battle around so this week is all about enhancing your programming skills as much as fun possible. So are you excited about the seven days geeks week journey? I am. The link for in the description below. Now you'll ask me why. So the answer to that is this avoids misuse of inheritance. It helps us to confirm that is a relationship is there. And it also says that subclass must fulfill the contract of the base class. Then you'll ask me, this is always happen. This will always happen. When will you violate it? So there's also one very good example where in Java code, I can m prove you that square is a rectangle. Just create an, uh, a class as rectangle. Just create a class as uh, square and extend it and just give length and breadth equals. So it is not in real. The square is never a rectangle because all the height, everything is same. But in rectangle, it's not necessary. So in real world, it is so it's it's actually not true but in code it is very easy to implement some wrong user relationships to prevent you doing that it's better to make sure that you are following this Liskov substitute principle and how will you make sure just try replacing your child uh, your parent with your child so i was passing employee i tried running my code with passing the child and still my existing functionality doesn't break so it makes sure your application is intact and very nicely created. So this was Liskov principle. Let's completely move to inter interface segregation principle. In the start of the video, do you remember I've told you that this is similar to the first one. What was the first one? Single responsibility principle. If single responsibility principle and they are same, what's the difference? This is responsible for classes while Your interface segregation principle is responsible for interfaces. Now, what does it state? Again, some difficult words, but we'll make it easy for you. So it says that clients should not be forced to implement unnecessary methods which they will not use. A simple example to that is your, say, suppose your pizza store or pizza online application. So what it does is you can have three things there. Your interface can have orders for online walk-in and telephonic and you can pay to them as online and cash. Now I'll give you an example in interface, okay? I'll say pizza app, simple, not much complicated. Now with this interface, I have public void except order online. Now I can also have a method accept order offline or walk in and i also accept order with telephone okay now how if okay it's good that you or you you accept orders how will you accept the payment so i can accept the payment as accept payments online and accept cash so great we are so happy we have created one interface which handles everything so good so far no it's not so good because now if i implement a class to it say my pizza client i am the pizza client suppose and it implements pizza app. What will it says? Please add all unimplemented method. Now I am selling pizzas. Now there might be different franchisees who are selling pizzas. Now these franchisees all have to accept online order also, all have to accept walk-in orders also, all have to accept telephonic orders also. What if I don't want to accept any kind of order online orders or I don't want to accept any kind of telephonic orders i just want either you come to my place or either you on online accept i don't i don't have any kind of uh, assumptions that you are going to accept a telephonic order but still you have to implement it because it's given in your app in your interface so clients are 
forced to implement unnecessary method this is i am the client i am i am actually forced to use my except online telephonic or these kinds of orders suppose i just want to take cash i don't want any online payment to be done but i still have to take it even though i don't have any paytm or anything i still have to do it why because you are forcing me to do that because you have done it in your interface so this is worst kind of violation for this principle so what does it say how do you do how, how do you like rectify it so basically this principle is applicable to interface as single responsibility holds for the classes already done this states that we should split our interfaces into smaller and more specific ones so what is the solution out of this so how do you make sure that your application is following the segregation principle so you better do one thing you create a smaller interface so i say pizza app interface online now this interface is just having online orders and accept online payments simple and then i have similar to this offline now this what this offline is going to do it's only going to take walk-ins and cash some something very similar to this right now we have n n n number of these type of things to be done and remove this i don't want this so much into one interface so i have now two interfaces and now i am a client which deals only with offline things so i can just implement okay i'll first remove everything that i had to do forcefully now i'll just use my i'm an offline uh, pizza app so i'm just going to implement my offline things so add on implemented and just walk in and i'm going to accept only cash so that's all i want to do i don't want any kind of online or telephonic uh, orders so this is how this is the beauty of your segregation of your interfaces into small small interfaces so that you just make sure that your client are not forced to implement unnecessary things and you are capable to cater their needs to have only few things implemented in their class so again why this principle this prevent the client from unnecessarily getting stuck with you in implementing unwanted unwanted methods so see he is so happy he is just doing everything on offline similarly you can have one more client doing online which implements your online interface which accepts order online and also accepts the payment offline they do not have big stores to get you things into their own area so it's good to have things online so that's how you can segregate in the real world now the last thing what is dependency inversion principle so this is a very nice principle we have already seen this like hundreds of times by now it states that depend on abstraction and not on concretion so i'll give you an example first so this is how we have one class student okay i'll, I'll give you one example here itself so i have my class called a student now the student class has a constructor now this constructor depends upon new address class so can you see this is such a tight coupling if you can see this is such a tight coupling unless you don't give a student a address student won't be created this constructor will not be created so the pro this particular thing is a problem and hence we should go towards dependency inversion so we have seen this a lot of time in terms of sp spring also so rather than depending on these concrete creation with new uh, keyword you better depend upon abstraction and what is the way to do that auto wire it and make all these handling either give to some xml external xml file give all these dependency to that xml file so that if you want to change something you just change your xml file and not your whole class now suppose i don't want address class i want some another class you rather don't change this class implementation you better go to that xml file and change all the dependencies so our design of the software or the application should be in such a way that various modules can be separated from each other using abstraction to bind them together now this how does it help you it uh, so we have seen in spring how does it help us it helps us to remove hard coding dependencies so that it becomes loosely coupled and extendable also so in the above example student requires address object to initialize it if address is changed we have to make changes to student also so if if i change the name of this address class change student class and change all the hundred of classes where the name of this particular class is changed so rather do that in xml file and user dependency injection to do that 
This makes a tight coupling and we can resolve this problem using dependency inversion design pattern. So basically dependency injection is also a dependency inversion design pattern if you don't know. And address object should be implemented independently and will be provided to student when student is initiated using constructor based or setter based dependency injections. So we have seen already the constructor based and dependency setter based dependency injections in the previous videos. If you want to know, I'll just give you a link in the description below. So I believe that is all I have today for the solid principles. We have covered all the solid principles till now. So let's just revise what all we have covered. We have covered single responsibility. Do not add much more more things into your class. Just keep it simple. Open and close principle, Liskov substitution and principle, interface segregation principle and dependency inversion principle. So that's all we have for solid principles. If you still need some more doubts and if you still find it complex, just let me know in the comment section. I'll create a more detailed version on all of these with the real world examples. Thank you.